All right, it says we're live. We're going to trust that we're live. What's up, folks? Tea with TCE, tea, coffee, whatever it is that you drink. Also, fun fact, I don't know if you all know this, but I love tea with TCE because tea is also like gossip and, and what's going on. Um, and I feel like sometimes that's kind of where we end up sliding into. So what's up, folks? Um, today's loose topic is uh, criminal justice reform. <laughs> so stick around if you want to see that solved. <laughs> <laughs> well actually that uh, the ECT conversation kind of that that JRC ECT conversation does kind of slide into this a little bit. Let's hear it. It's it's, it's, it's adjacent. Um so there's a controversy floating around again for the upteenth time uh of criticizing the Judge Rottenberg Center for the use of electroshock backpacks um as a as a punishment procedure. Uh, for certain students in certain situations and uh, there's a petition floating around for them to enforce the federal ban on that sooner than the whatever date that's been proposed and uh, it's creating a lot of stirs and emotional responding and frustration <clears throat> I want to preface a things that I think matter that I don't think everybody knows about the JRC and that's in the 80s. They suffered a lot of violations and a lot of uh, a lot of accusations. And they went through a huge thing. There was a 2020 expose about it. A lot of shit went down there. As a result, um, the guy, what's the guy's name? Is is your Israel something Israel Joe or John something Israel? Oh my gosh, he's huge too. Na no, oh my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> keep, the keep guy who founded up. it. The guy who founded it got the boot as a result and actually is no longer even has been permitted to be associated with them. And they institute a ton of, instituted a ton of reforms as a result um, to the point where actually the state didn't want them to go because they were the only institution that would take certain individuals that it was either that or Rikers Island. So for my two, by the way, <clears throat> they have a lot of people coming from prisons and that kind of stuff. So throughout Matthew is real. Thank you, Nikki. Um, so as a result of that, there's, they have a high, they're very much come from a, a punitive background in terms of delinquents and, and they treat it more from a criminal justice angle and, in a, and as a diversion program. Now that's, that's not me advocating for any of these things. I'm simply stating exactly like what the context is. So the discussion makes sense. Um, and they all they have a lot of behavior analysts and, and but they also have a very specific operating philosophy. Now, a couple things about the ECTs that I learned from speaking to them personally, having lunch with these people at a couple conferences and having them even visit a facility I was working in fast for my colleagues were doing uh, educational consulting for them, teaching them how to implement DI procedures in their classrooms. Um, is that one they have like a small handful of those backpacks and the, and the ECT devices. Number two, they're monitored by their court or and monitored by a magistrate and ex, and all the protocol and procedures are explicitly written out in such a way where the person is monitored 24 hours of video. So each incident can be observed and only supervising individuals can even implement it. Not anybody can even do it. So it has that, to be observed on the that camera. Court mandate comes after six which actually months. is an argument for its inefficacy. Um, so I'm sorry, Brian. That court mandate comes after like a six months database decision around like positive based approaches aren't working too. Exactly. So, uh, you know, I think it's a little bit of a disingenuous characterization when there's people like out saying like they're indiscriminately implementing punishment procedures and or they're not really like considering human rights and that kind of thing because like the courts are involved. There's six months of data supporting the inefficacy of positive behavior supports. It's implemented across very extensive close learning. I mean, like they literally have cameras everywhere where it's legal to have a camera, they have it and someone is observing it continuously. Um, so I don't necessarily, I don't know if I would necessarily do it, but I also do know that, you know, uh, it's easy for a lot of people who don't have experience working with severe behavior and to criticize people who do because they they can't quite understand the intensity the need and the realities of the contingencies that govern those responses they had um, a um, because it's a different angle 
It had a t <clears throat> uh, at one point a ton of research, a ton of data, and a ton of videos that were on their website that they took down. Um, it really showed, I think, the perspective of those severe cases um, that I don't think are on there anymore. It's hard to find them. I distinctly remember one of them where the client had completely chewed their own lips off. And so it looked like out of a horror movie where you're just completely missing all of this right here as a result of the severe um, SIB that was going on. So it was, it was a different picture painted on the website at that time, I think, that highlights some of what you were talking about. Um, I know also that there was the one big article on the misapplication from an employee, right? And I think that that seemed to be the fatal kind of blow for them. And it's just one big mess up that shouldn't happen, but it seems that that really sent them on the downward trajectory, in my opinion, the last 10 years. Yeah, Jim saying it was like a nightline. It was a nightline thing or 2020, Jim, uh, to your, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I don't know. I, it's it's gonna go anyway regardless because the ban is coming so at this point it's kind of i mean not a completely moot discussion because i think it does lead into a discussion over the use of punishment and the use of extinction and the comparison between the pbis movements and some of the more explicit even behavior analytic movements who are anti-escape extinction and all this other stuff so like that's a pretty robust discussion that we could get into i know that was supposed to be about criminal justice reform but that leads into both of those things. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I mean, just form is by definition, you know, exercising societal punishment for, you know, what, what, we, what we consider a define as crime. So then it's like, what's the efficacy of aversives? What's the reality of them? That kind of thing. So. Well, and I don't, to you the know, group. My, my opinion of criminal <clears throat> justice should be that it's not necessarily punishment based or at least not immediately. Uh, we should be applying other strategies to respond to things that produce meaningful change. Right, as long as I think the ultimate question, a, go ahead, Judy, sorry. No, I was just going to say, as long as they're done in a, uh, you know, con <clears throat> follow, follow through one, two, three, four, five, you know, you have to follow through and different, <clears throat> different people have different backgrounds. So, I mean, I, that I am not, I don't have any knowledge in this realm, but it sounds like exactly what Rebecca was saying that, you know, you have, to, it doesn't sound that it, it's essentially not right, but you know, what's the follow through beforehand, what has happened before. So. I think when we're talking about use, like the use of punishment, especially for like, so the question, what's the purpose of the criminal justice system? Is it retribution or is it reformation? Right now it is. Yeah, it's you know, retribution. Absolutely. hundred yeah. percent. You know, so <laughs> if, if you, Control if you come from a perspective, yeah. Well, yeah, if you come from a perspective where it's just simply the exercise of retribution and vengeance, then, I mean, you really don't have an ethical, even moral, then I don't really think it's working well. Human problem. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I don't uh, disagree with we're, you. We're not even doing that about, well. Like, <laughs> yeah. I the was doing the moral some... justification. I was doing some research on this um, just because it kind of sparked my interest. And one thing that popped up is um, prior to 2008, um, well, I should say right around 2008 or 2010, I can't remember off the top of my head now, but the, um, the American Bar Association basically <clears throat> came up with a, what, what I would view it as is almost a code of ethics for prison systems. Whereas previously, I don't know what the code of ethics was. They don't call it a code of ethics. They call it something else. Um, but that's how I look at it. When you start reading through it is, um, I don't know what it looked like before, but starting in 2000, whatever 10 that they, that they put it out there, um, they started, they, they attempted to make it obviously a, a more humane system. Um, a lot of the things that are in it, um, are surrounding, you know, humane treatment, making sure that we are really tackling that recidivism rate, um, making sure that there are opportunities available within the prison systems for education and reform and counseling and things along those lines, um, making sure that they are using um, behavioral strategies even um, within, within the prison systems. Now, that obviously 
I was like, oh, this is cool. Now, gr granted, it was 10 years ago, but we also know that progress is slow. Um, so I started taking a deeper dive into it a little bit. And what I noticed is, um, which, you know, I, I know very, I knew very little about, about the prison system and, and, and all of that, but there's the federal prison system and there are state prison systems and, and they are governed by different bodies. Um, so it was very interesting for me to look at it. I was looking at the, the federal, the federal prison system. And um, as of right now, they have a pretty good system in place. Obviously, there's always room for improvement. Um, but according to their website, um, so I don't know what implementation looks like, but according to their website, they have a lot of really good strategies as far as wanting to really drive home the concept of making this a reform system um, versus a strictly punishment-based system. And so I said, okay, so there's the federal system. Well, let's look at states. And so I started looking at the state system and I happen to live in Texas. So I started with Texas and they also have um, a, a whole system for the, for the state prison system regarding um, how to handle, um, you know, recidivism and making sure that they're tackling it from a behavioral standpoint and making sure that they are um, looking at rehab rehabilitation programs and, um, and things along that line. And so I said, okay, well, how effective is this? So I kept looking. Um, and um, what I found is that um, I looked up the recidivism rates for different states. Um, Texas has one of the lowest recidivism rates, which is for those who are unfamiliar with what recidivism is, it's basically going back to prison after you've been released. Um, so Texas has one of the lowest rates. Florida has another super low rate. Nevada has a super low rate of recidivism. And by low rate, um, basically what we're looking at is less than 25%, which honestly, overall, that's, that's really not that bad. Um, considering in order to, to really hone in on a lot of these issues, we would have to be look, we would have to look at the environment that we're sending, you know, um, individuals back to, to really tackle the environment versus just, yep. you know, fixing it within the prison system and then sending them out into the, into the world, um, basically train and hope <laughs> strategy going on there. Um, but then I started looking at, okay, well, if, Texas's um, recidivism rate isn't that bad. Let me look at another place that <clears throat> their recidivism rate is a little higher. That's closer to like the 40 or 50% mark. And that's where I, I wasn't able to keep diving in. But, but clearly there's something that, there are some states that are on the right track. And then there are other states that are, that are missing the mark. Um, I think I saw New Hampshire was up in the 40% range. Um, other states are up in the 50% range. Hawaii is one of them, like super high recidivism rate. Um, so I, I would be curious to, to really look into, you know, what, what's missing in, in some of these systems where, um, you know, we're at 20% in one state and 50% in another. Um, and, and my thought was, okay, so it's going to be the bigger states that have a higher, you know, return rate to prison, but it, it, that's not the case either. Um, I mean, if you're looking at New Hampshire, it's a pretty tiny state, Hawaii, that's super tiny. Um, granted, it's, you know, it's very compact and, and condensed and across multiple islands, but I don't know. It was but just, I, it was really I would actually think the, the smaller places would have higher recidivism because there's, you know, and the other ones, it's just kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to go over here and find somebody else to throw in there now. That's interesting. I would want to evaluate the statistic of recidivism relative to other things like sentences, sentencing guidelines too. Yeah. Because I think specific Texas and Florida have a lot stricter sentencing guidelines. So you really can't reoffend if you just in prison for life on the, on the, on the get. That's very so, true. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. Um, what the, you know, Florida has so what that's is a it, good the cook 10, the book. 10, 20 life or something like that. I want to share something too, because the couple of behavior analysts I know that have worked in this area still do, as far as I know, in Nevada's juvenile system. We were talking one time and they were talking about the difference between recidivism, habitual delinquency, quasi recidivism, and then uh, reiteration or something like that. Um, I'm going to share it with all the listeners real quick. But the basically, the, the way in which you reoffend um, can be classified in a number of different ways. And that was interesting to me from a data standpoint. Mm -hmm. I think part of 
what we don't know either contextually is like who is actually running these, though we have state and federal. Um, we know that there are prisons that are run by private corporations now. Yeah. Versus those that are actually run by state and federal employees. And that's big business now. Yeah. And so like, they're like send people in to work for companies when their employees protest type of business. Right. And their job is to make those numbers look really good because they want to win more contracts. Yeah, I think private prisons, I mean, like there's so many motives. There's the thing is about the way that the criminal justice system is structured at this point. It's like, we really need to press the reset button on that. Like really hard because I mean, Jim brought up some interesting points in the chat. Like Jim should come in. (laughs) <laughs> i'm sure uh, jim will probably come in if he wants to but i'm gonna dm I mean, like, if they want in yeah Anybody? yeah dm if they want to know but i mean i think the big thing is that like it's designed to address like every possible social problem and ill through stim through coercive control and then on the flip side of so incentivized to uh keep people in prison and or actually keep them in the system as long as possible um because there's a lot of money involved i mean it's it's really hard once you get caught up in the system to like get out of it. And like the escalation too happens pretty frequently um, and pretty easily on basic stuff. Cause you can go in say for like a DUI and get put on probation for a year, but then you, something happens and you miss a person meeting and shit like like that. And now you're in violation of probation, which escalates. Right. And then now all of a sudden you're up for a crime based on a crime that you committed that was you know, and it just becomes this like staggered effect of the controls becoming cyclically punishing for no reason, because the purpose of it is simply to exert cap- capitulation <laughs> rather than actually reform. So like, I, not to mention, like, there's a lot of disparity in terms of like how those types of things create the conditions of recidivism in relation to cost. I mean, like even a $150 fine, Oh, if you can't pay it, then gets escalated and escalated to the point where you can't pay it almost like collections do. Right. And then it gets to a point where the only way that you can pay it off is through serving time. Um, so like, I don't know. I, uh, I think private, pri- I think private prisons are an abomination just to be very clear about that. I think that's an absolute fucking disgusting practice that I cannot believe exists in our society and that anyone would profit from imprisoning another person is so gross that, anyone who advocates for that should look in the mirror and be ashamed of themselves. But, um, cause some things you don't make money on, you don't make money on the fire department. You don't make money on the police department. You shouldn't make money on prisons. If your neighbor's house is on fire, you don't quibble over the price of a hose in the words of FDR. But so, I mean like that stuff, those factors alone make this an imp- almost an impossible thing in my mind to tease contingencies that we could even possibly look to evaluate in a discussion like this, because you start pulling on every thread and it takes you into infinite amounts of directions. Do we talk about class disparities? Do we talk about economic disparities? Do we talk about uh, racial disparities? Do we talk about regional disparity i mean like all those Education, things are such intense mental factors health, yeah. yeah mental health yeah, exactly. mental health yeah. supervision people are not being supervised Biety once they do come out yeah. and then they're arrested great the arrested the rate goes up because there's nobody to help these people who are paroled and then they get back in you know their mental health goes down so they get stuck on addiction and abuse and then they have no job and so it's, it's a horrible circle yeah. Well, exactly. and just from a I mean, non-violent, analytic, non-violent I mean, crime versus violent crime and the way that yeah. you get prosecuted drug crimes know, versus then, violent crimes yeah. from a behavior analytic standpoint you know people <laughs> respond to the environment right so Absolutely. people are committing crimes based on to mm-hmm. you know a good portion environmental of contingencies what yeah so yes. so i i feel like you know criminal justice should be Uh, a balance of yes people need to take personal responsibility for their actions and they're responsible to make changes but we as a society also need to take responsibility for the the contingencies that are in place that are leading people to commit crimes and we need to all look at you know when when someone commits a crime like the entire community should respond by looking at okay what was going on that led to that and is there something that we need to change or is this you know predominantly resting on the shoulders of the individual who committed the crime. Well, and I absolutely... Sometimes... Them. 
So when yeah. you bring no, entry ahead. service into the community, you need like addiction treatments, you need um, transitional housing, um, mm -hmm. training. You need to be able to get a job. Um, yeah, you need to get a job. Legal services, you know, if you're not, if you didn't do what you did, who's going to help you, you know, defend yourself and you're going to end up back into, you know, back where you started. Even mentoring. Yeah. People who've been there, who've been through the quote unquote um, new component that the reentry system has helped them, you know, it's it just, it's, you know, it's, it's. Well, there's thing. also a permanence to it. Like, uh, honestly, like, I, I'm, my brother is a felon. Okay my brother's livelihood is almost impossible. Like it's, how do you get a job? It's a scarlet letter, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you commit a crime at age 22, cause you're just an idiot, you know what I mean? And now 15 years later in your thirties, are you still the same idiot? And if you paid your debt to society, should you carry a scarlet letter with you? That makes it impossible for you to be employed, to be actually earn a living so that you don't have to resort to other types of means in order to be able to be sustainable in your life. I don't think so personally. And I see it firsthand how it plays out. So like, I, I have to say that like, you know, this is one of those things where I don't quite understand. There's so many different factors to it that I don't understand why it is set up the way it is other mm -hmm. than, um, other than that, it's simply about a retributive system mm -hmm. that doesn't permit for second chances and or, only permits for second chances if you can afford to pay to play to number one avoid the strict consequences that come and and also to pay to reform your image in the future like the difference between white collar and blue collar crime too because i mean like we don't prosecute white collar crime the way we we do blue collar crime right but which one's worse which one's more egregious over time so i think those things matter too I don't know. There's just so many different factors on this thing that it's like, mm -hmm. let's pick one. Do you guys want to pick one part of it and try to dissect it? Because I feel like we're going to go all over the place if we don't. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, you know, one of the things I think of when you say that, too, is just looking at why have people chosen to pursue a criminal justice system that operates that way? Oh, that's a good question. And Ooh, I I, part of it, I think it's based on a lack of understanding of how behavior works. One. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. that's true. So That's how do we, how do we educate society on the way that behavior works so that people can choose to um, approach criminal justice? So now we're talking about the issue of dissemination and how to disseminate to a wider audience versus disseminating strictly to the uh, tiny world of ABA. Acquire. Refinement of principles yeah. to use in yeah mm -hmm. which actually goes into a perfect conversation i was having uh we were having this week uh in comp class nikki oh you're, you're not in this one but, oh not this uh, one <laughs> over jargon and terminology oh yeah that's actually what i was about to say is one of the one of the ways that you would disseminate to a wider audience is by changing your terminology and making sure that it is user-friendly um yeah one article that i was reading this week is um disseminating you know uh, using stimulus equivalents to target a wider um, range of topics versus just, again, just autism. Um, and how one way you need to do that is by, um, you know, ACT did it. ACT is attempting to do it, I should say, by changing the terminology of, you know, stimulus equivalents and RFT and making it more user-friendly, talking about values versus talking about contingency management or, you know, there's a couple of things I can add on to there real quick. They did uh, what they call um, mid-level terms. And the idea there is it kind of meets in the difference between the technical, but it rooted in something that maybe people understand more. So values is a good example of that. Um, the reforming of stimulus equivalents, though, was largely because they said it operated differently. So it's kind of like they wanted a new term for the similar effect that was going on. That was my understanding of it all. So I think there's kind of two things there. If anyone's looking online that are that's kind of watching this, mid-level terms is what they call them. And it's a really cool area where they're trying to explore how that works, right? <laughs> when you do those sort of things. Honestly, I just wish the re-entry criteria was better. That's like the one area. If I like sentencing is such a legal, like nest thing that like there's I don't know if that's a thing that you could change, but man, I think a good area where behavior analysts get involved is probation that Absolutely. would be a good that would be a professional position or like before that dimitri like in in you know getting a getting a behavior analyst to 
<clears throat> relate to the people who are in charge and, you know, set up programs that are within the actual system for them to, um, you know, learn how to get out of your addictive personality. Well, yeah, that's a whole other one, but, but your addictive, yeah, addictive cycle. cycle sure. And, you know, getting sober. And, well, you're obviously sober now, but how to stay sober and, you know, how to change yeah. friends and how to, um, you know, get legal services. I was in, involved, oh my God, it was probably about eight years ago um, with a group, they were called, they were called um, Gangster Yoga and they went into jails and they did yoga with these people, with the, you know, it was with whoever was in jail. And they were just like, you know, this is like really cool. You know, they were, they were enjoying doing yoga because it was called gangster yoga, you know, and they're like, oh, that's really cool, you know. And so Nevada's PBIS team, uh, super behavior analytic, and essentially was having such awesome results that they started getting through with the probation officers. The probation officers is, is kind of like who they're, partners were and they started expanding off that i haven't touched base with them in probably three years i know it's still going um but it was a fantastic example of what y'all were talking about their outcomes were just leading to more and more opportunities to work within that area the other thing that was really interesting is you'd see these cyclical patterns roughly every 20 years mark malley and i used to look at these he was super into punishment and, and prison reform and so the it was cycling roughly on your state level as to whether or not they were more punitive versus rehabilitative sort of programs. And so the folks in there just happened to catch like this really good, Nevada was on the upward wave of wanting to rehabilitate and like implementing some of those programs. So they're doing some really cool stuff. I'm gonna share the lead person that was involved on it. I those would, great programs that you're talking about, Ryan, like those are like, when they're on that cycle, that means those programs are getting funding, right? So then, they have more consistency with being accessed. You know, when they're mm -hmm. on the other end of the cycle, those programs aren't getting funded. And so there aren't those steps and there's not that consistency with, um, you know, them being able to access those programs and go through those steps and have better outcomes. Yeah, and the um, book that I shared with Rebecca on case one and case two, you could see that even when you had the results, it was a similar thing where the uh, the funding was kind of dried up as a result of the political differences, not necessarily because it wasn't effective. So I feel well, like- Yeah, and that goes back to how do we get people to want to approach it differently? So I think one, one thing that, and, and I'm gonna go off on a short, tiny little rabbit hole. Cool. Um, <laughs> Um, is I, th I think one thing that we're just missing and, and if we're really wanting to dive into how do we affect things on a bigger scale, um, which I'm going to say something that we all know, but it's by getting away from teaching strictly to autism, right? Um, and how do we do that? We have to do it within the university system or the college system. And how do we do that? We have to have people start really looking at, you know, um, not just making this a strictly autism based um, science or, you know, psychological field, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if, if we can get the university systems to start looking at or ABAI, who, whoever we want to talk to, if we can get the powers that be to really start looking at branching off and, and diving into um, subsets of fields, which we talked about, I think last time too, is, is, getting university systems to not just teach the autism aspect, but to do behavior, behavior analysis. And then you have your branch of criminal justice system, or you have your branch of, you know, um, you know, uh, working with mm. this population or gerontology or working with this population and, and really looking into taking those branches and diving deeper into them and then getting those people out into the world. So I, I don't, and the only way we're going to do that is by getting people to talk about it and people to, who have the ability to make those changes actually start making those changes, um, which is, which is again, part of the reason why I want to have these conversations, because yeah. I do want to inspire people to, you know, think about different ways that this can be applied, because we have bigger, like, we have big fish to fry. Yeah, there's, we a lot, there's a lot of fish to fry. And, you know, one of the ways that I see, too, like, there's all, you know, we've talked about a lot of programs of how we can respond to people after they've 
offended or, you know, after, after, after all this other stuff, how do we get them? But I still want to talk about how we prevent this stuff from happening and how we, how we create a community and an environment where people are supporting each other and building each other up. Um, and, and one of the, one of the places, organizations, whatever that I see doing a lot of this stuff is the contextual behavioral science field. Um, paired with the Evolution Institute and the pro-social work. And they're, they're starting to really, um, you know, take off with a lot of stuff that they're doing and actually getting into um, designing different um, educational, you know, strategies and or um, getting into, you know, how do we, and if we look at this from a, you know, from a functional contextuals perspective, like, if we start getting people, whether that's people in businesses in their own companies, people in within their individual communities, if we start getting them working on cooperating together, supporting each other, building these, you know, cooperative relationships towards a shared interest, shared, you know, value and purpose, people are going to continue to operate in that way beyond and then, you know, in the, in the broader field and, and, every every one of them can see experience how things can work differently and can go out and affect change and everything else they touch because we all belong to a variety of groups a range of different you know things um so yeah like i kind of want to just question yeah sure do you think it's naive to think that that's possible Nope. Like, I just feel like there's this uh, guy named Anand Girahandas who wrote a book called Winners Take All, talking about the uh, notion of win-wins being a veiled way for the upper class, billionaire, multimillionaire, corporate class, to feign charity and to feign social pro-social participation in society while still ensuring that they can maintain their own interests um resulting in like acute scenarios good being done rather than blanket raising of all the boats so to speak and like what you're describing and what i think is i don't think it's problematic i just think that like i'm starting to think more and more that that's like not a realistic perspective anymore like i don't i think that after reading that book, after really critically thinking about it, searching for win-wins anymore seems like a pointless pursuit because I feel like in order to affect the level of change that we're talking about based on the way so much of these types of programs have been gutted to the bone, I don't know if it's possible to do it without taking from other people and convincing them to give something up for the interest of society. And that I think is harder, but I think it's the more it's the more real way to talk about it because I mean like cooperation, like, like the, it'll all be bullshit. It'll be like, Oh, let's put a statue of this guy. Cause he bought a library for prisoners that no one's going to take care of. You know what I mean? Fill yeah, it with books over time. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's, or that's <laughs> it's not, bullshit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. That's like, but he's cooperating and he cares, you know, or like no, even that's... Jack Dorsey gave $5 million to Andrew Yang um, for UBI. Cool he's worth about 6 billion. So like, that's literally an hour's worth of for him. And he gets to claim that he's such a like wonderful person when in reality he supports a social network that creates toxic relations and interactions across society. And it's probably the most divisive thing on the planet, with the exception right. of Facebook. So, I mean, like it's, it seems to me like seeking to gain or create these like cooperative networks is cool. But I also think that it, I also, I'm not sure anymore how realistic it is. Like, I really don't, I don't, well, I don't a, know how realistic it is. It, it's a matter of variation and selection too. Um, there has to be enough sure. of them for, and, and what you're talking about isn't like real cooperation. That's just like a facade of, you know, let me, that's, that's PR. Um, whereas when you actually take this approach and you, you step down into it, you're at, and you actually are communicating with the people that you're working with, um, <clears throat> you come up with shared, you know, purpose and values and goals and you, you create a situation where everybody is working towards a similar thing and you can all get what you actually need, not what, you know, looks like whatever. And when there's enough of those groups out there, people will start self-selecting the groups that are actually cooperative towards them and the ones who are selfish 
will fall by the wayside. Yeah. I don't know. I, but are there I, I enough know. people following those? those yes. Um, yeah, you think so? It's, I, I think I, I, I don't know that it's going to be fast enough, but absolutely this is an international um, endeavor and there's lots of people out there and it's getting, I mean, I, I start seeing the pro-social book pop up, you know, random places and I'm like, oh, good. And, and, and I think that's the thing too, is like we in our field are so <clears throat> inward focused that, and that's part of, been part of my frustration is I'm sitting here like, why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing this? And now I'm like, I'm gonna go do this with, this, with these people because these people are doing it. You there should, are people and- doing it. Yeah. And that, I think that's positive. I think my, my, I don't disagree with anything you're saying. My, my real yeah. thing is that like, I'm just thinking about what is, what is the actual impact that you can imbue and like, what does that look like? And I, I think honest, I think it needs to be a lot more subversive than seeking out the level of cooperation. Like that's kind of where I've finally gotten to. Like, <laughs> I, there... I just don't know if working with fat cats, working with people who, cause yeah. the bottom line is, I think that just as an ethic, as a cultural value, American society is self-serving just in, mm-hmm. intrinsically. Like it's but not I, based on, it's based on rugged individualism and it's based it's, on, on money. I, I like was those reading, are like intrinsic values. Yeah, yeah. I was reading the pro-social book and they actually talk about um, studies that um, they did where they took college students and then they followed so when students went down the economic track where they were basically taught homo economicus and you know uh, people are gonna serve their self-interest and then they followed the anthropology students, after two years of training, they diverged in their way of thinking. So they were of taught course. to expect that people are selfish and therefore follow that. So I mean, right now, what exactly what you're saying is kind of that same perpetuation of that. Whereas if we change the narrative and we actually you know, put it out there and talk about it and you know, give the no, real I, like i agree yeah. that they're conditioned i agree yeah, that it's conditioned well, and that's why uh, it's I a cultural work. social conditioning i agree and that's why i want to work with students is because we yeah. can condition them differently and i don't you know mean this and we're gonna go and but just show them what's possible give them the opportunity to work in these groups and when they see what works and they see like where people can actually benefit they are going to go out in the world and demand that in what it is that they do beyond that. They're gonna go out and they're gonna be like, I'm not gonna work for you if you act like that. Like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the people who are cooperative and working together and we're gonna, you know, and obviously not everybody, every, there's gonna be spheres of environment that, you know, influence different people different way, but that's where the selection process comes over time. And there's still gonna be variation obviously, but yeah. I think it's possible I'm, and I think more people need to get involved and the more people we do get involved the more effective it's going to be that's true yeah I don't uh, my optimism I don't I'm not as optimistic as you are on that end I, I, I think that it's it's oh, become don't get me wrong. so polarized <laughs> and permeated and, and, yeah. and what we are that is the narrative so then the question so then to me is like I would want to just accept that as the narrative and say, cool, if that's the narrative, then this is how you combat that. I, and you flip I the ball and play a different game. I can't accept that because that's literally going to destroy the earth. But how do you change someone oh, going from a, a person that runs into the fire than a person that runs away from the fire? It's just, is that innate or is that, you know? No, everything. You mean can be like, learned. how do you like confronting that? Like, a, like what someone who has the courage to confront the courage exactly. of the convictions versus someone right. who just goes with the flow. Like a fire, like a firefighter, literal, literal firefighter. Yeah. Like I am gonna go and run into that burning building and help someone. Meanwhile, well, it matters. I mean, there, you know, I'm like, I don't, I don't think there's a single person. I mean, there's there may be very few people alive who wouldn't, for one reason or another, run into a burning building. Disagree. I think yeah. I think it depends on what's in that burning building. a lot building. of fucks out there. Yeah. A lot more fucks out there. Yeah. I'm with you. It's, oh. I mean, Rebecca, all you got to do is watch the stock market to know that. I mean, like, you can't have 36 million unemployed and have almost new highs. I mean, yeah, but, but I mean, what, that's what I'm saying. Though. Like, the competing and, contingencies are too extreme. And verbal rules. Yeah, exactly. Your I rules. agree with you. Yeah. I agree. Verbal rules. I, correct. Yeah. I th- but I, I mean, they... like, contingencies, the thing is, is to, to, to reverse a contingency, you have to have equal as powerful reinforcers and or counter contingencies to create the amount of okay, so relational here, pressure to 
shift the like, responding in that direction, right? I, I think so like, there is the question room. is, what's more powerful? I think there is room for not everybody to have to come on board with this because when the amount of people who actually would do come on board with it, those people aren't going to control everything anymore because everybody's going to be operating and there's always going to be selfish players. Sure. But they're not going to be able to be selfish to the point where it causes the destruction of the world for the rest of us. The other thing that I, that I think about when I think about this stuff is that I think it operates from a fairness fallacy. Like those motherfuckers don't play fair. Like, no. like, they, like they, cheat. they don't, but when like, they're, they don't if need you, to be the majority to win. They just need no, to have but, more resources if, and the but, ability but what to are they? But what are they offering? What are they offering to the rest of us? How are Nothing. they getting their they money? They don't have to. Yeah, it's all about themselves. Yeah, I know, but they they have to get they have to get people to provide their resources to them somehow, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's... I think what he's saying though is it doesn't need to be you or anyone that follows. But like, if there is an alternative people will choose the alternative. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that Maybe. broadly speaking, eventually, <laughs> I think algorithms and social media have made that almost impossible at this point. See, where I, I see this, there's a reason why you have such a large segment of the population who votes against their interests too. And they've done so many studies. Well, because how do you so... convince someone to operate against their interest? How do you, you convince them? Like, I'm not saying it's hopeless. What I'm saying though, is that like, there's and people that I, vote I think against that, cooperation to me is not the route dissidences there's people that the, vote against their interests because subversion. they don't have a clue what the hell they're voting for um I, I good a good portion of us are following along with the what's being told to us you know oh we're fighting for this yeah i gotta join the democrats because they're gonna fight for our rights when really they're back there voting for corporate interests anyway um but um if we can start small and design our societies <clears throat> around cooperation that will scale up into the groups that we choose to connect and operate. So if so many people go out and start these small groups, small community, mm -hmm. small society groups that function well, they're going to link to the other groups that are cooperative. And eventually those groups are all going to link up and the assholes who are out here trying to take advantage are going to be screwed because there's going to be nothing left for them. Yeah. I, they, I mean, they might be fallacy. all right. They're going to, you know, probably survive or whatever, but, but it's the cooperation will take over because. Yeah. And I also think like that operates from the evolved. stability fallacy, like the position, the contingencies don't shift over time. Like that would like what you're saying in an ideal situation would be true because if the contingency is clean enough, if the, the, the what social environment that's created is consistent enough over time, regardless of scale, it will just either overtake or be, or like be like one thing will win over the other. Right. The thing is, is that as contingencies shift over time, like there's an mm. automatic dilution of whatever the original idea was. And then that's the whole idea of like the politics of compromise. Right. And then you get to that point where like things get absorbed into a system as a whole. Um, so like, I, I'm telling you, like, I, I, I'm not sure if that's a thing that I get, Oh man, we lost you. But yeah. So anyway, I know that Judy had a thing, right? She's gone. Yeah. She'll she, yeah. She'll be back. I'm sure. Um, um yeah i don't know man i don't mean to i don't mean to like disagree with you but i just like i feel like i i don't i don't but, like i'm over this optimism routine like so, i just don't want to be optimistic but about it, it doesn't have to be like there's even things built into the pro-social network if there's there is there's the the core design principles there's principles about if you're not following this like yeah you get <laughs> you get there's graduated sanctions and that sort of thing. Like, it's not just all about let's hold hands and fucking sing Kumbaya. Like, I hear you. that's not what it is. It's right. you're going to, you know, cooperate and play by the rules or you're kicked out yeah. and fend for yourself. Um, you know, and and there's entire just the entire evolution science, a study of multi-level selection theory and everything else um, of groups that cooperate together with other groups will over time select for you know the the 
the continuation of the, those groups that are cooperative, given you, the right contingencies. So how would you go about the then, or how are, how are they going about trying to instill something like this from a smaller level? Because like you said, that is, that's how it would have to happen. You'd have to start at a very tiny... Mm-hmm. It's all over the place. They've already worked, like they've worked with tribes. They've worked with businesses. There's an entire model of um, providing training to businesses and getting businesses to operate under these pro-social, um, you know, methods and ways of, and see, and that's the beauty of it is it's not going in and saying, you need to have this value or that. It's what are your values? What is your group's shared interest? What are you working towards? We can make you function effectively together. It's about so what happens when you have a together. group that's like, I want to <clears throat> destroy everybody. Yeah, game that's theory social. blows us out of water. That, that's where... Game theory blows us out of water. No, because it scales up and that's where each group functions in a network of groups. And so selfish individuals will slightly benefit within a cooperative group unless they go so far to get kicked out of the group selfish groups yeah that, then they're called rogue actors i mean my thing is that like here's the thing yeah. like this is cool but i mean like and i'm i like the idea of it a lot but there's mm -hmm. a whole nother discipline in political science that a, a game theory discipline that games out different types of scenarios like this where you have a stag hunt which is a cooperative game which is what you're describing it's you're describing what's what's theoretically considered a stag hunt OK, and then you have other things like the prisoner's dilemma where you put people against each other. Mm -hmm. But then like the, you also have like rational actor models that assume that everyone within a particular system is a rational actor. And then but however, that gets blown out of the water, especially in contemporary society. Most <clears throat> rational actor models are gone because those models are based on balance of power models um, like in the mid turn of the 17th, 18th, 19th century type scenarios. And they've been blown out of the water with superpower, the emergence of super and hyper powers, and also the emergence of rogue states. So like, if you do pull this out from a macro perspective and you look at it from an irrational macro model, like those types of cooperative measures become a lot more about resource management and control in those capacities rather than becoming like organic growth systems. And then you compound that with the ability to dictate global perceptions through the control of the deployment of algorithms okay that it becomes a lot more difficult to do it in a nonviolent way because then you get because you see such a consolidation of resource power and not a control of resources not even necessarily just like the actual resource themselves but control of the resources yeah well so and i dealing don't with that kind of like disparity of power relations yeah the only way to do that is that is to take is either to take the position of the rogue actor or I'm to not capitulate advocating, into the system. I'm not advocating that there's no room for violence within this. Let me just make that. I, okay. <laughs> We're not advocating to, to the Homeland Security and uh, whoever else the NSA that's listening to this. I promise we are not advocating for violence. Have, no, no, no. I yeah. I'm I'm just saying that there's not not room eventually for that right. where necessary. You know, like yeah. it's just a yeah, matter. But I mean, of, I'm just saying like. The pro-social people, I don't know if they've evaluated the game theory aspects of this, but I don't like, know there's Probably. a whole they're discipline pretty, that would say they're pretty they're gonna well lose big time. Um, research. The, and the one thing I've seen commented kind of consistently on uh, David Stone Wilson stuff, it even happened on my own uh, video I did with him, was comments around something like this saying that his Achilles heel is the hope that bottom up pro-social change is possible. And I think they're rooted in discussions like yeah. you're kind of talking about here on that. There's just a lot out here. So really, I think time will tell and data will tell. Um, yeah, but time will only tell if people actually go fucking try this shit. It's, That's true. So That's go true. fucking try it. <laughs> yeah, but like there's... <laughs> because there's, the world needs to be saved, God damn it. <laughs> the, issue, the issue is, well, yeah, it's up to you. Like go do something about it, really. Yep um we're all so aware. if you were to if, if you wanted to send people somewhere then like what website yeah. would you send them to what pro social what would you, dot world pro social dot world mm -hmm. and there's a book between stephen hayes and david sloan wilson called pro social and there's a book that i um that just came out that i can't wait to read from um our boy uh, Anthony Biglin, he just wrote a book called Rebooting Capitalism, so I'm very curious to see what that really? has to say. Yep, just okay. came out days ago. I got you. I got um, you, Tony. So, yeah, lots of, lots, 
lots of stuff going here's on here's a there. rebooting capitalism podcast that dude's gonna get sued i think <laughs> i wonder if he looked into that i wonder if that's trademark so what let's switch gears what was the question that got emailed this morning uh i don't know it's totally separate from criminal justice reform and pro-sociality though <laughs> <laughs> so we could do that it's just a hard change shift pivot I'm just, I, I think that like, I, I don't mean to cut it off. It's just like, man, I feel like these, this is, these conversations go in circles because you get to like this point where it's like the only options are like such slow, methodical, almost generation, just generational level patients yeah. <laughs> that like but, uh, and, someone but like me, ADHD person like me just doesn't yeah. have the Well, but the that's the thing that it. I love about the pro-social is that they're building it so that so many people are working in so many different um, avenues that it, it will come together a lot more quickly. It's not just like, oh, let's go influence education or, oh, let's go influence this. It's, okay, let's take this, apply it in all these places, <clears throat> and there will reach a critical mass. Yeah. I'm there. Hey man, yeah. I, I do. I'm with you. I, I, I'll talk all the shit in the world on the internet. No problem. I'll vote. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah, right, let's I just would. do a quick aside. What was the question? Yeah, go for it. Let's get. We'll get back. I'm sure we'll come back to this. <laughs> it's just like we're like this close. We're about like we're like a stone's throw away from talking about Trump, and I refuse to do that on my podcast. <laughs> oh fuck it! It's not about he. He's a symptom. He's not. <laughs> Fuck there's the uh, so, to, to close it out there's the rebooting capitalism link you can uh get it for shipping only it looks like yeah if you get it quick you can get it for shipping only otherwise it's like 20 bucks on amazon or something uh, oh you can literally just pay for shipping on it 7.95 yeah they set it Sold. up as a yeah really buying it right i now. cannot believe this thing was named rebooting capitalism with an entire massive podcast around rebooting capitalism floors familiar with the podcast uh, they did it on purpose. <laughs> no? Probably. That, that's, just, that's just grounds for asking for issues. Um, even if it's as simple as like nobody thinks, <clears throat> nobody, everyone thinks it's associated with the other people. Um, you know what? Maybe like, really I've cool, seen though. so many books that are like titled the same goddamn thing. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That might be general uh, enough that you're good to go. Yeah. Um, like, why we do what we do, it's, it's not something that can yeah. be trademarked. You can't um, own a phrase. So, Judy, you made some sort of comment. I honestly don't remember it. It was a quick email this morning, though, talking no, about. I, yeah, I was up late working last night and just how it was it's totally not on this topic. So, I'm not going to cut this topic off if you want. But it was more on quarantine life and how all of our state mandates and lockdowns. Your, your volume's kind of low. I can't hear yeah, you. Yeah, it sounds like your mic's on the other side of the room. But it was... <laughs> it was centered around uh, what do we think the impacts of, like, quarantine is going to have? Because largely a lot of people may feel like they're just kind of sitting around waiting for the next thing to happen. Like, we can't actually mm. do things, right? right now. I think this to topic this. fits perfectly into our current it topic. actually Absolutely. does <laughs> because what are it. the effects of being restrained constrained in one's mm -hmm. home yep. you know without a real terminal end end game mm -hmm. against one's own will like i mean it sounds like imprisonment doesn't it <laughs> yeah which which is completely against the pro-social way of operating on things which is why i think pro-social should be influencing the way that our government functions Dude, I'm with you. I think we should have universal basic income. But like if dreams yeah. and people cooperate like and oh, puppy dog tails I, and ice cream I were think, real, we'd all be living. I think <laughs> more of our business, like the majority of our business should be public based, where people are working for the essential functions of what you know community society needs. Like, okay, you go work in food, you go work in, you know, trash cleanup, you go work in mental health, you go work in like all of these things should be public. You want to live in a commune. Marks. I hear you, Marks. Yeah. <laughs> what you got to be? <laughs> yes. Carla? Yeah, I don't understand that. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I think last time she was recruiting us to yeah. live in her commune. So yeah, I hear this. That is a, yes, she wants to live in a commune. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think the world would function better if people's uh, needs were met. Yeah, I, people I were don't cooperating listen. to accomplish I, these I, things. I think that gets into system. a conversation. That, I mean, Skinner tried to talk about that in Wal Walden too. I think when you talk about like, you know, what is the of government versus like what is the best for the societal structure I think you versus can also like does that add those in things? private. Yeah. I think you can have well. a human centered capitalism. I think yeah. you can have that. Yeah. Yes, it's called social democracy typically, you know, or at least, you know, Nordic countries have it. A lot of European countries do. Uh, there was an, there's an economist named Mark by Road Scholar um, at Stanford who referred to uh, the way that Europe is currently dealing with the crisis as driving in a nice Volvo that has air, a very high safety rating and airbags for its population. And the U.S. is like a Ford GT Mustang that just hit a wall. We're sitting, <laughs> so, in, we're uh, sitting in the back of know, the, <laughs> the thing with no right. seatbelts. We're like, we're in the, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Right. So like, yeah. yes, you can, you can choose to design a society that feels like Volvo, yeah. comfortable and safe for everyone. Or you can you know, be riding in a, in a racetrack uh, on, a, on a race car in a Lambo yeah. and enjoy the luxury while it lasts and something bad happens. It, I think that it gets to a point where, like, I agree with you, something has to give and things have to shift. And I, I, I can't stand this. Just like personally, it literally makes me cringe. And like, it, it, it leaves me sleepless at times. I, I hear you. I just have a certain degree of like <sighs> powerlessness towards it because it just, it, like, at some point, it becomes a thing that it is what it is, right? Well, and that's because you're resigning yourself to operating within the current system. And I'm saying, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I love this shit. This is amazing. It's interesting for me. Like, how do you say screw the system that's that's in place right now? Because you have to operate within the system to be able to build the new system. So it I becomes know. this weird paradox for me. Yeah, you do. You, like, offer... you have to have cash to be able to do yeah. things in this. You don't need site. cash to grow to... food. So so, do it. Like that would be the thing. Is like build it completely and do it. I I think it is possible for some, but like I don't see that winning, unfortunately because of the, the current environment that we're in. Mm -hmm. So to answer Judy's question, I think what quarantine has done to all of us has turned us into mini Chase. <laughs> we just want to put, put star hats on and burn oh, the gosh. motherfucker down. <laughs> I was going to say something beautiful good. about ProSocial too, and I can't remember what I was going to say, but it was good. God damn it uh yeah i don't know like yeah. it's it, i mean it's slowly been driving me crazy i don't know i've literally been like skipping in and out of consciousness at times <laughs> like and like getting mad about stupid stuff and like being pretty apathetic and unmotivated having to force myself to get up and do things um and honestly find value in some of the shit where it's just like okay i can do that or not you know <laughs> and like i don't know that's where my issue comes in is like, uh, and I was saying this, you know, a few, a few talks ago was just like, what's the fucking point of half of this stuff if the right. world's going to end? <laughs> but once you get over like the depressing aspects of that question, once you get over the depressing as aspects of that question, you kind of either it? like get, get okay, get comfortable with it. Or you kind of, where you arrive to this like amoral nihilistic fun? perspective or it like fun to flip the system it. It it would that. yes. actually yes. Would yes. Fun? absolutely let's go fucking yeah. do it let's go. <laughs> get a couple Not of bats possible. some Not razor possible. wire <laughs> you protect yourself you keep saying that right now <laughs> it's not I mean, like I, I mean the yes, the only is. way don't I listen think in it's possible the only way I think their guns can do are bigger is, than ours you can only operate within or in so the it only takes yeah i just i mean there's no the only way, way you can do it it's been shown that you can do it in very small ways so like the venus yeah. project is uh something done in florida that tries to operate off of a pretty behavioral sort of perspective and designing and building societies from the ground up everything from the infrastructure that they build as to how everybody lives there and they've for 30 years been trying to build uh just more than their one little pilot site with eight or 10 places and they can't convince people. There's just too, like we're too far ingrained and down the road. But we're not, it's just a matter of, like just because something didn't work 30 years ago, like you have to keep trying it because factors oh, change. More people are- The definition of insanity though? 
they've been yes. they've been continuing to try for that long and no. i think it's a worthwhile thing but like the disconnect <laughs> is that you have to align and operate within capitalist uh capitalistic like an individualistic framework that's the only way you get progress in the society that's my eh, i don't think you have to align under it i think you have to learn how to work Pro- properly against it. like so i mean really like what is every, what are what what are they going to do if literally all of us just stayed in our houses and decided that's not that going to happen though. that's the thing <laughs> that, 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 Dude, that i agree happen if, if that was possible yeah yeah Sorry, that's what Ryan. i was going to say is it's not <laughs> I, get it's, real passionate. I also if if we could do something like that absolutely like we would why couldn't we like the people India of got, society because you'll start and you'll what, start working exactly again. <laughs> that's because what what's going to end up happening is there's what? too many fear-based contingencies going on there's right. Too many, there's, there's way too many of those going on where people are more concerned about basic needs being met than you know the greater good. Yeah. I am but way more. What I'm saying is, let's make but... basic needs available. Let's all like if we all work together, we can make our base. What the problem is is we can't have all this capitalistic consumerism bullshit that we don't fucking need. We can't all have our basic needs met if we work together. And one thousand percent agree with you. I've actually spoken, and I'm, I'm not even joking. I've spoken to my husband about, hey, let's just go buy a big plot of land. Yes. And we'll get all of our friends. Correct. And we'll all just live on our plot of land. Yeah. And we will all be so happy together. Uh-huh. Um, so when I How tell you, you I am, uh, yeah, right? Uh, so when I tell you <laughs> that I am in line with your thinking, I like, we are, we are very, very here. However, I will also tell you that I have, I mean, I've, I've, we've experienced a lot. <laughs> um in our lives and and the people that I, that we've come into contact and by, I say we yeah, my husband and I um the people that we have come into contact with <clears throat> the people that we um have spoken to you know that um there are the lack of education in society and the fear like I'm, I'm not kidding you yeah <laughs> the fear-based the fear-based contingencies that are in place right now and the um, immense pressure to engage in that capitalistic form of thinking, it's, it's too great to, um, to, to tackle on a grander scale. Not it's, when you recruit enough people in to participate. So that gets into yeah, how do you do that, right? right? So like you how- start small groups and yep. you get- groups of people who are supporting and providing each other and you find the other groups that are doing it and you supplement the things that you're missing and you, you cooperate a, and you work together. I think you can take a case example of Alex Jones and what was being attempted on that as a, a loose example of what will also start to become problems if you pursue rising from the ground up in ways that fight against a larger <clears throat> system. He was deleted off of YouTube. He was removed off of him. other platforms. Yeah, like the the every McDonald's said, work you... in the country is striked last week. Have you ever heard? Did you hear about it? I did. I shared it. Remember? I mean, you heard about it because you yeah. care about that shit. But I mean, like, <laughs> was it not. on MSNBC or Fox? I was, was it I was on pissed. CNN? I was. Every I was McDonald's looking, I was worker in America striked. Why? Well, every it single on one. Facebook. Yeah. And I didn't hear anything about Americans that. that I don't know that it. every single one did, but. They, it was it was major cities, yeah. Or it was like a, a national like some strike. good chunks. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They tried to shut it, it down. That's strike. why. That's why people need to look for these things and. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's why I say like, it, if you t- if every group takes care, it's kind of like this. You can't pour from an from an empty oh, cup that's thing cute. too. I like that. Everybody needs to take care of their own, like, everybody start taking care of your damn selves and the people around you. And the big shit will work itself out. Bhutan is living in uh, Star Trek land. What? I man, that's the thing. Like my goal. Let's, we yes. were talking. Who were we talking about that with? Was it a? Uh... Most of them to actually get in that country. You, you were not. You're not allowed unless the perk is to go to that country as a tourist. Oh really? They don't. You're not allowed to it? go to that country as a tourist. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. You Which country? Time? You can only Bhutan? move there. Oh wow! Cool like- I agree. I think we should define happiness through. Oh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, I think we should define happiness through uh, 
like not the economy. Like I don't think, I mean, that goes back to, uh, again, Immanuel Kant, man, it's uh, universal axioms, a categorical imperative, like human beings should not be, should be means not ends in and of themselves. Right. Like, I, I, like, I agree with all that stuff. I mean, that's, that should be the way that our morality should be is structured over time though when you have atlas shrugged released you know and naran being taken up as a philosophical position and then you have the greed is good movement of the 1980s that shifts the narrative and the overall over into a window in such a way where like again rule governance perspectives cultural attitudes don't follow that so then and, the question well, becomes, how is how do you shift those cultural attitudes your 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 proposal is organically through small communities that over time grow to become such an integral web that they over very aggressively that primary scenario. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but not I mean, delicate. Like, very aggressively small. Um, I mean, but no, like, but also, but okay. I think we have an like we have an opportunity though. So what what is different now is we have this global pandemic, and we have people are recognizing the impending doom of climate change. Um, and there is an entire generation of people who are like, fuck you and what you set up for me. Like, are you kidding me right now? And there is potential for a bigger mass change and movement. I think there is a generation so how, of people. So going back, how has We just need to give them the skills to be us. successful. We're questioning the value of society. <laughs> <laughs> well, questioning not questioning the value, the value of, of society, of but society. we're questioning the value of consumerism for sure. Yeah, that's for sure the case. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. So, Why do we need know. to own so much shit? Why do you need? We don't. This stuff? I know, but I mean, like, and, I like, but, and I I'm saying, like, my, like my, my my droid phone. I'm not gonna the, lie, that is pretty the, cool. The the adults who were in the '80s yeah. trained in the greed, you know, whatever. They're fucking getting old. Um. There's and more those more greedy bastards getting old too. <laughs> and they've grown. They've, they, that, now they're less scrupulous. They, they taught their young how to take their estates and continue yeah. forward. Like <laughs> I, I had a dream actually that I took these old greedy politicians and put them in a fucking room with their grandkids and had them publicly in front of like broadcast to the world and in front of their grandchildren tell them I don't fucking care about your future. You can die. I'm not going to be here. I don't give a shit. But I mean, that's not where again, their values like, op- the values systems operating out of, though. Yeah, it's and like also, what are the that. behavioral implications of that delay discounting is is a, is a human phenomenon, right? Like we delay the fu- like we discount the future. That's just like every generation will do that perpetually over time, you know, because yeah. that's how that that's how the incentives for human responding are. Like so. Sure. Again, like it, it, it's like some things you're you're kind of fighting uphill about, right? So then yeah, the question is like, how do we cr- is- possibly a signal and some people are recognizing it as a signal and it will of, happen it, and, and it's listen, gonna happen it, again and it's gonna, the tipping point will happen absolutely there yeah. were there's a guy again there's a guy so named uh, chamath there's a guy named chamath <laughs> papataya ceo of social capital he's also a former uh yes. top yeah. 10 investor right like i, I, sh- I showed you that would, thing right yeah i, I thought about, about reaching out for him for philanthropy yeah like he's i mean that dude like he's he's he quit he was one of the top 10 guys in facebook in 07 and actually mm-hmm. quit because yep, he said okay we own. developed a, a, a nefarious technology that actually programs people and alters the course of culture and it's mm-hmm. completely unregulated and i can't do this anymore so he cashed out his billions and did his own thing but i mean and he's openly saying that on every major network mm-hmm. on a regular basis up until like last week even he was doing it yep so i mean like that also though does kind of underpin the point that i'm trying to make to you like somebody tag like, him <laughs> how do you counter how do you counter con, how do you create counter contingencies mm-hmm. to such a powerful force that has 7 billion users 7 billion people on the planet so like you have to have strong enough program programming materials to incorporate those things without it being a generational yeah. game. You, you right? teach people how to be distracted and return their attention back to the task at hand. Okay. So what what I'm That's like saying stop watching that's like not the graphic, but like, and I know we had an incident recently. And I'm this joke, but that's like telling the world to stop watching porn. It's a $6 billion. No, industry. no, They're it's telling the world to watch your porn like, for an appropriate amount and then return to what the fuck you need to do. Yeah. And social media literally has neurological side effects. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oof. See, we're, we did the rabbit hole thing. So anyway, see, this is what 
quarantine has done to us. We've been reduced, <laughs> reduced to this babbling mess of people who just don't know which way is up anymore. It's like 1984 I, so, level so, shit. So, so here's it's like, my what's thing. What's the truth? I don't even know. Okay, so here, so here's my thing. Whether or not we can actually succeed in making it happen, how would you choose to live the rest of your time here? Do you want to choose it um, perpetuating in a system that's going to fuck everybody over, or do you want to choose to engage in something that has the potential to maybe change things for the future? I mean, that's a that's an uh, that's a that's like a value question. here's the thing. I, you that's don't, a, scr- that's a straw answer. man though. That's a straw man because it's like, yeah. do you do you like? marshmallows or do you like bullets to the face i mean of course no, i like not even more. no it's gonna be it shit is. either fucking way it was shit <laughs> I, uh, per- participating in the system like we have all sat here and complained about how fucking shitty it was so you can be shitty and participate in the system or you can be shitty and not which one yeah, do you choose? i'm with you I, and like that's i mean I, I i would want that and i do want that yeah and I, I i do that through my vote but i mean like Again, short of complete and utter civil disobedience and dissidence, you know, Martin Luther King level civil disobedience, it's an impossible thing. Like you don't do it, you don't do it gently. No, you don't. That's my political question too, though, is like, we have, we have grown to this thing where we, we are sitting back and being led by people who are making decisions. And I don't think that's how our government was supposed to be designed, like in its core development. I don't, I don't know that that's... It was absolutely designed to be that way. That's why we have an electoral college. Yeah. But, like, it's supposed it to be absolutely based... absolutely designed. It was intentionally it designed to be, to be that way. On, but isn't it supposed to be based on collaboration and input from the people it's who are being governed? Like, it's that. in absolutely our freaking constitution. It's actually the opposite. It's designed to be an adversarial system. That's what checks and balances are. Yes. So checks and balances assume adversarial relations between the branches of government. And electors are there to create a buffer between what is good of the of the country versus what is the mob's desire. It was specifically to avoid quote unquote mob rule. So like, like it's, 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 it's this false, it's this false rewriting of history that we have as Americans that we think number one, that we live in a democracy, but number two, that our democracy was necessarily designed to reflect the, the, the desires of the the electorate because that's not the case. Yeah. It's designed to be tempered in some capacity while still having respect for property rights. And like, I don't necessarily agree with that in today's contextual reality and the way that society has evolved, given all the technology that's come right, in its entirety. But like it, like those types of arguments to the appeal of the American dream serve no one but but the status quo, because like if you do look at the historical realities of it, it's it's designed to be untrusting, it's designed to be adversarial and it's designed to, to be self-perpetuating eternally through all the various redundant measures that are built into the system. <clears throat> and that's also why once corruption does breed into it, it's so hard to weed out because it becomes entrenched. Oh yeah. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing what, we're seeing what happens when like enough corruption compounds in such a way where like it's able now to be entrenched. Sorry. I feel like I just like mansplain that shit. I'm, I'm not trying to do no, that. No, I, I, I like, fully put it out there that I have no idea about yeah. how the shit is set. Like I, I <clears throat> full disclosure paid zero attention to anything historical, political, no, I, nothing. Yeah. That was not um, my jam. Had no idea. Only yeah, recently so have I been um, thing to trying look into to is, figure out. The thing to look into is, all, is the electoral college, I think. Um, <clears throat> and things around where you're voting. Vote- where gerrymandering comes up in that yeah the like where your vote actually how much your vote actually influences and what are the different things that actually lead to somebody getting into office um well and that's why we need to go local like we need to influence yeah, so like, influence the fucking the most direct assholes up the most there. direct way imp- to imp- 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 local influence that other than a elim- other than elimination of electoral college which is never going to happen at least in the, in the near future is an amendment to switch ranked choice voting yeah because ranked choice voting would permit the not the non-binary choice to be controlling outcomes yeah um, um like there's so never like never mind i'm not gonna ask this question yeah the the <laughs> ranked choice voting yeah 
ranked choice voting is the other yeah. is like really the the thing that would also this might be a, like a website that you're interested in checking out more mm -hmm. i don't <clears throat> so represent.us has some interesting stuff they've got some articles and things they've linked out they also have celebrities behind the movement a little bit so like anything yeah. take it with a little bit of grain of salt right. um but they have a very ground up local first um perspective on how these sort of things should occur mm -hmm. that if you haven't already ran into rebecca or anybody else that's interested in yeah. this stuff i think it's an interesting way that they're trying to move forward um on topics like this mm -hmm. it's messy largely i just don't participate and if that was the goal of some power at be up high a long time ago then he won she won you don't vote they won shame on you nope i don't i've disclosed this before other places but the uh i'll vote in uh okay but can i make a plea to i want to make a plea to all the people who don't vote and say can you please fucking go vote for a third party um my thing so that is four years from now we can maybe potentially have a broader spectrum and array of if you think your vote's not going to fucking matter anyway go make it matter in the sense that if we can get enough of you assholes to go fucking vote third party if they're not going to win the third party yeah. isn't going to win See, I, I don't think it's going to work like we might hit that seven percent vote or whatever the hell it needs to be represented on the national stage you can even write it in but that's also like that's not going to get the, the, the that's not going to change things that mine's a kind of practical standpoint i get there's some some uh, uh errors in this that I are just kind of my choices here, but the, um, I took a stats class in like, what was it? 2012. <clears throat> they were looking at the chance of your single vote, which I get this is crazy, but follow me. The chance of your single vote <clears throat> actually swaying the election was one in over 200 million based on what state you lived in. Yeah. And so when they're looking at how much your individual vote matters, it's actually very, 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 very small, extremely small. And that was the closest state. And that was like, if I had gone to the poll and voted, would that have swung the entire election? Um, That's again, though, a false statistical analysis. It is. I mean, it is. like it's a mathematical analysis. 875,000 assuming of you that, that respond that way well Correct. what that All what that equal, led right? me there's into, a compounded effect yeah so with that yeah so the compound effects are things we look at and what <clears> that led me to was just kind of understanding more about the electoral college which i don't have advanced knowledge on this in any sort of way but for me it was understanding like oh it's not this popular vote like <laughs> the popular vote it's was irrelevant. was yeah it was irrelevant and if we were going it's off irrelevant. of what we thought it was then we wouldn't have who we have in office right now because you didn't win the popular vote. <laughs> the, the, uh, so for me, it's, it's uh, how large is the system you're trying to impact and then how much does your vote matter there? So I've, there's arbitrary lines where I've drawn the sand, I guess, with this BACD, ABI. Like I read up, I participate, I vote um, in those sort of things. I should be doing more on my local level here in Reno, 100%. Yeah. Um, and for that, usually it's a, uh, I don't, feel knowledgeable enough to make an educated vote, which is just me not putting in the fucking time to do that. And so it's one of those self-development things where like, I need to start doing more. Probably should this year since I've got time on my hands. Um, but I, I guess that's 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 uh, where I've kind of thought and operated from the last 10 years or so. I can see Dimitri's just like, I can't believe this guy doesn't i'm vote. not mad dude <laughs> honestly like i'm i'm, I'm not like, mad i'm I, disappointed I'm, <laughs> well, I'm not even that anymore like uh, uh, another thing what's quarantine got me to the point where like i really can't at this point when it comes to I, i'm a pretty opinionated person i think that's pretty well established in the podcast <laughs> no and like i no and i'm pretty argumentative too but i think that it's kind of the point where it's like I, I i can't judge people anymore for what they believe and what they think because like no one no one's right like right, no one fucking knows. What, like yeah. there's no grownups. Like no one knows what the mm -hmm. fuck they're doing anymore. Nope. Reality's been flipped upside down. So like, if that's what, if that's the world you need to live in to feel comfortable, brother, like do you? Like that's fine. Well, and that's if, that's if, part if of it. It's just kind of this statistical explanation is adequate for your position. Then honestly, like, 
abstinence so is just as party. much a statement as not. It just well, doesn't, what, what, result, it just can't win anything. Exactly. Well, what it is, is it's it's a form, of, I, I don't know if this is the words you'd put it in, but I look at it as just kind of like, it helps me justify escaping from that to focus my time where I want to focus it on. And I get that that's not the, the appropriate, uh, no, it's not like a coherent I, logic, but for my thing, yeah. it was kind of, uh, like we've been talking loosely about social media and other things. For me, it's like clearly, if you don't operate in a larger bubble of what it is you're trying to affect, like you're not going to be able to really affect those sort of things. So, like, I did participate in the local stuff when it was the nonprofit I was working at with Mark, and like we had to, um, we had goals and things that we were trying to do on increasing our funding opportunities and things like I'd show up and I'd engage those sort of things. So for me, I guess it's a, um, do I think I can affect it? Some of those things justify it. I also understand, like I use them as justifications, but I understand that um, they aren't justifications and like, I just don't spend more time there. But the other side was like, do I, um, what time do I have and what can I affect? And I've felt that's more of where I end up falling. Well, it becomes, it becomes a resource squeeze. It becomes a question of like, what are you, listen, what this really boils down to is what is each person on the individual level willing to give up in order to achieve whatever goal they want in the end, if you're going to be, if we're going to just be purely pragmatic about it. Mm -hmm. So like the question is, am I willing to potentially number one, give up my freedom because civil disobedience comes with consequences. Am I potentially even on even like less intrusions and less intrusively than that? Am I willing to give up my not pay my mortgage as, as part of a rent strike or mortgage strike and potentially suffer foreclosure options at some point? Am I willing to give up a paycheck if I were to participate in a generalized, like, like all the, like you have to be willing to suffer the consequences of whatever thing mm -hmm. that you're talking about. And the contingencies are not, and I think going back to what Casey was talking about, like the aversive controls that those consequences hold over our behavior are pretty, are pretty much outweigh whatever perceived outcome that in my opinion, I think at this point in time is reasonable. Now that's not to say that if I wasn't in a more desperate, destitute circumstance, my opinion wouldn't be different mm -hmm. like yeah. like if i'm a 30 if i'm one of the 36 million people that currently is like waiting on 1200 bucks so that i can actually buy groceries yeah. and i'm waiting 150 150 200 300 cars deep waiting for in a food line to get some foods from a food pantry like yes if i'm with those people i start honking i get a sign hey let's drive to dc and let's march you know what i mean and then mm -hmm. That's where the way the, the I mean, but again, that's where the contingencies have to be in place in a particular way to actually motivate people to be willing to give whatever sacrifice because like and, those people at that point time have nothing to lose the and the contingency weighs coming. the other way. That's the tipping point. You see yeah. what I'm saying? We're not quite at the point money in or we're at only, a tipping point for yeah. But, for that to happen, but right? We need to be looking at not just the contingencies on us, but the contingencies on the people that we want to change things. Like it, if enough of us showed up at their freaking doorsteps or you know chose not to participate they would freak the fuck out so I, and i don't i don't think so unfortunately. i don't i don't i, I don't yeah that's the thing like i, I think enough of us is like like a human like a mob like you're talking about a mob like well that's, and and yeah, that's I also mean, assuming that the popular opinion and uh, things are actually what's going to be changed um i will do my yeah. darndest to find this but there is some stuff that was being looked out of like stanford or something like that i'm looking at what the probability was of the pu public opinion um impacting whether or not something passed in congress and it was almost zero influence it was yeah. demoralizing yeah i mean well, if that were true we'd have medic like there would be medicare for all 72 percent of americans like if that yeah. were true social security would never even be in danger even in the slightest 90 percent of americans but there, there are like yeah, so like, there are countries where they do get three million people at the drop of a hat to go protest. So yeah, and those why, countries why have histories we? of and again, cultural contingencies. Those countries yeah. have histories of like you're talking about France. You're talking about like mm -hmm. countries that don't have the level of civility built into their system, and they also don't What's have the level of, <laughs> of, of representative. Uh, they have a different kind of parliamentary systems yeah. that permit mm -hmm. for the level of pressure that that may be possible. You know, yeah. when you're in a representative republic, a republic that's a two-party system, like it's a very different scenario. And that's what we I'm saying. Like, the level of impact, direct you, impact on our, our government. Going, going back to what we were talking about before, 
can those of you who do not want to go vote for either one of the primary people, please devote what 15 minutes, an hour, whatever it is that you need to do to go vote third party for fuck's sake. But the, what is the third party actually do it for Becca? But what, <laughs> but honestly, like what, what value does that that offer? So I it, go right in it, somebody. It one gives a demonstration that we can mobilize enough people to say, fuck you. Mm -hmm. It two changes the platform four years from now so that there is better representation on the stage for uh, someone mm -hmm. outside of this two party bullshit that we are currently operating in. Like it's a demonstration. Can you yeah. take an hour to go demonstrate in a way that has zero consequence on you other than the 15 minutes to an hour it takes for you to do it? And that's where like, there's, there's actually not enough people that care about that. That's my point is like on an aggregate, I just don't think enough people- Do you care about it? I don't believe I can impact that system whatsoever. Zero, zero, okay. zero, 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 zero. Because it's well, yet to the happen. Third party have been written in. I mean, they. If you go on to, let's say, um, I'm not even going to name a channel. Whatever channel you're watching for the outcome of the, um, who's president? The Democrats, they're Republicans, like, yeah. and then you're going to have, you know, they have the list. They have the people. Those those third party people. You know, they mm -hmm. are showing up in the in the television and you know media and they are. So. But they're not getting the debate stage time, and they're not. not getting no, they're not. Their, but they're in time. Uh, that, well, there's steps. And one of the steps is acquiring enough votes during the election yeah. to qualify for that. I, that I is did, the first and step. And I did that. I, I, I do that. Yeah. So. Yeah. so I'm saying all you fuckers that don't want to go vote. Go vote for just yourself. Come right on. Just, just <clears throat> tell them fuck you for a minute. I voted for that doesn't, that doesn't do council. that. Dimitri, that let's all vote for Dimitri next time. I, I voted for myself once for city council, actually. That's hilarious. <laughs> I did. I was like, fuck it, I'm voting for me. Oh. Fuck you. <laughs> Maybe nobody else yes. will vote. I, so I would, love, I would love I would love on election day for it to be like, oh fuck, 25% of the population or 20 or 15 or whatever it is voted for a third party. Like, oh, are we seeing a shift? Because it would inspire. I'm not going to get that. You're not going to get that. Those, those I'm not going to get say? it because you're refusing to do it. Oh, yeah, because like the 15 minutes of my life is more valuable than impact, trying to impact a system that you can't impact in that way. That's that's at least. I want to hear Casey's knowledge bombs. What are these knowledge Ryan, bombs? Ryan, look at the impact the you've chat. done on the world of ABA. It's super minuscule and it's a very small portion. But it matters, to, the, it matters to of, us who's watching. Uh, yes. And so like, this is why my values directed behavior keeps going on these small scales. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. W what are your, what are your knowledge bombs, Casey? What is this? I, have I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I just, was, I just so wanted to going okay. on right now. Like there, I have, I literally have so many things to say that I don't even know where to start. Right. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I don't even know what happened. What is this? Yeah. What are we even talking about anymore? Uh, probably <laughs> I happened. <laughs> we have like so many different routes that we're taking right now. Um, you know, because we 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 were talking about basically starting a utopian society, which would look like I said be lovely, um, but, but I just don't think it's feasible. Um, I mean, my my husband's a political science major, and and I started talking to him about this, and he brought up the what is it realism theory in, in politics. Yes. Realist theory. Real okay. politic. Okay, yes. but realist but theory is all... basically saying that people will always stand up for themselves. Um, you know, they will always be the uh, acting their own best yeah, they're acting their own best interest when it comes down to it. As great, you know, as 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 wonderful as we want people, as we we and, and when I say we, I, I really mean like you and me, Rebecca. When I tell you, you and I have so many, we are in line with so many thoughts. Um, so I, I'll say I though, I have always been the type of person to, to see the best in people. I have always been the type of person to be like, you might be a shithead, but I really think that if we were to d dive deep, you know, that there's some good in you and we can, and we can work with that. Um, but as much as I want to believe that people, even if we were to gather, let's, let's pretend that we were to gather 10% 
of the 300 million people in America, 335 million, sorry, um, in America, that's still not enough. You know, like if, if, if all of us in our small bubble were to talk to three people, right? It's not enough yet. It's not enough yet, yet. but I genuinely don't think it ever could it's be. A process. That's, like, that's like the equivalent of saying, I can't lose 100 pounds tomorrow, so I'm not going to start the process. So we tried a third-party system. I can. Oh, yeah. So I, I, agree with that. I agree with that. Like it's a shaping process for sure. Um, but the, there aren't, and, and I, I'm trying to be so nice when I say these things. There aren't enough good people in in the world. <laughs> there are. Dude, read I, I Chris Hedges. And read Chris Hedges. And yeah. give up hope like the rest of us. But, yeah. no, but it's, America, but the it's, farewell tour. But okay. it's because it of the contingent. It's not It's not bad people. This is what I'm saying. It's not bad people. It's people operating under the contingencies they're on. And we have an entire science through relational frame theory and act to change how we respond to those stimuli. You guys are all saying, Absolutely. I don't think. It's not that we can't do it. It's I don't think we can do it. Can you respond you, differently you, to that you don't. You don't do it in, in the way of like... I, I think it's a it's a difference on uh, how to go about it. I think there's if you wanted to go ground up with the knowledge of like pro social and these sort of things, there just isn't enough people knowledgeable and with yes. the skill sets in those to actually do that. Yes. Maybe there will be in 10, 15, 20 years, whatever, but like no, it's gonna be best, faster than that. No, you need people that you need people that Happening. are extremely well versed in relational yeah. frame theory, there is yes. not nearly yeah. enough people that actually no. take. The There's time like six of those guys. Yeah, yeah. like two, <laughs> two women. You have and knowledge gaps. Eight people and several of them are professors who are influencing other people. Yeah, you know, they're of influencing people. academia right now and influencing a couple of cool studies. But like, are they impacting the end goal? We'll see. I think if there was something to start chasing out of that whole thing to start to impact the ground. So it's not that I don't believe in the ground up necessarily. I think that I would start in a different place with those, which is you would have to have an extremely large like training ground in place yeah. for people to actually get really good at these sort of skill sets. And that would probably take Institute. you your entire lifetime. I think I've been beat down on my timelines of what I'd like to do things on, but I think you'd have to set up a very, very good dojo for people to really master these things as like, Step it's one. It's happening. Get involved. I and you read the books. Absolutely. I read the books. I make the yeah. videos. I don't see the great people coming out of it. I'm not fast I'm talking, enough. I'm talking to the world out there. But, that, but that's, you, we don't know who's going to be great. I'm not fucking great yet. I love that. I fucking love that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> but guess I'm what? Gonna I'm going to fucking make shit happen because I'm pissed off. Make Becca great again. I mean, what? And I what love it. Yeah. And I love it. And I, I I am in the same, like I said, I'm in the same line of thinking that if we could all do our part to. And that's the thing. We get enough people. If we get it, if we could get to do this little thing. To do we this. just have to do this little thing. Yep. If we could. And I, and I think and that. They are. And I, I, don't, I, agree. And I just don't think. I, <laughs> um, and, and I. I I've met a lot of people. I have met people who are extremely wealthy and I've met people who are very much not very wealthy at all to the point of um, where, where this topic originally started, where they are living in a, in a culture where it is, you know, a, a better <laughs> mindset to um, do <laughs> activities in order to make, the, make their lives better. Let's, um, let's embrace know. chaos theory. Yeah. We don't know what pieces it's going to take to make this shit fucking happen, yeah. but at some point, some things are going to mix in the right fucking way and they're going to take off. So let's go fucking make shit happen. Let's so, do so, shit. So that throw the be, spaghetti at the fucking wall, see what sticks. So that might, like be a, might be a good point in time to say, like, what are some goals and how can you act on this in the next week? Go to prosocial.world. But and if you're, see if what conversations are occurring there. If or, there's someone like yourself that's knowledgeable in this stuff already, like what would you, what could you do next? I go, like are you doing go to anything? Social. World. I am having conversations with people who are um, developing ways to uh, change the way that education functions um, by getting 
evolution teaching across the board into things, getting ACT into schools. Um, those are those that's that's the direction I'm choosing to take. But literally get start to gain an understanding of multi level selection theory. Um, go see the research <clears throat> on pro social and how groups function together. And 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 I mean, and just going back to behavior, just the, the behavior that we all know and understand. People operate under contingencies. If you want to change the way that people operate, change their contingency. Go do something. Give to your neighbor and watch their behavior change. You have to go give. You can't wait for them to do something. <clears throat> but how do you how do you get more people doing that? So like I know that's what yeah. you call the action is, but it's it's the how to get that going. And that's where um, I believe in the so vision. So learn, and this goes back to the X stuff. Learn how to have the thoughts that I don't think this can work. This isn't going to work. I don't think I can do anything and fucking do it anyway. Like learn how to change your brain. And so one, so one very specific thing that you can do to do this, write down on a piece of paper, I can't walk across the room. And while you're reading that, get up and walk across the fucking room. That is one actionable thing you can do to change the way that thoughts function in your brain to influence your behavior. And that comes straight out of Stephen Hayes act training stuff that he did. They did research studies on it where they brought people in and just wrote that or something else on a piece of paper and like just changed their perspectives after, you know, the study was done. So that, that I mean, that's a very... I'm yeah, gonna go hug weird. my neighbor after this. One. <laughs> go fucking! I mean, maybe go hug your neighbor and see what neighbor happens. Right Bob and Sherry, uh, the shit. If we like, all went out and hugged our neighbors right now, I guarantee one of us would be on the news. <laughs> maybe not no, hug, would... but like, go put some dinner on their porch or something. Um... Neighbor tries infecting neighbor with COVID through. <laughs> Sherry might even call the cops on me. She's the head of the neighborhood watch, so it's like I get updates from her uh, via the neighborhood watch uh, app, like no, I, six I, times I think... a day. I think part of your call there, Rebecca, is like we we have great people do it. This is if I could like extend and mesh my thinking with what you've been saying today. Yeah. It's that we have we have a lot of good things started in different areas. I love Biglin, Hayes, Sloan Wilson, all those folks and what mm -hmm. they're thinking. Um, I don't I haven't done enough of the work to understand exactly where it falls through when it comes to game theory and these other things like that. I've read a little bit in game theory years ago, but I never like read one, read the other, and tried to put them together. Um, that's an area, but there's an area of like, how do you keep these little small communities growing? What can you do yourself? And I think really at the end of the day, like the call for these sort of things uh, could be, let's all change the system and do stuff. And, but I think it's, we, we need people doing very specific things in that. And, and uh, yeah. like what, what you're asking for is, people sometimes to devote an entire lifetime really to yeah well no i just want which... people to like go so whatever group you operate in go mm -hmm. and have a conversation with them on hey what are the values that we share what are we trying to accomplish here well, what i know, don't think what, that's a bad what's standing in our way what you know can we do better and just create that cooperative system for sure i don't think that's a bad call to action and it's usually no, the best way to start moving forward but the 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 way I look at it is like we need we need that plus we need people that know how to do it well and to oversee how to do it well and to offer the men right and the mentorship and these other things so it's for me it's like the call to action can be this grand grand thing of fuck the yeah. system and do something that's pro social yeah but then under there like we need a lot of different roles and scopes kind of built out like you and need this in the education system you need this in like and, it's, a... and it's starting. And that's where I feel like if we go, if we go start operating in this little way where you do, you just build that into your group, more people are going to change their frame of reference to the world For and sure. they're going to get involved. I think it's the questions in at the expense of what? And if we've learned from it costs very little to go ask people I, what yeah, they want no, to do. No, yes. Yeah. Sorry not to direct expense out of your pocket, but um, like the ACT model versus the VACB's model of trying to certify versus just say, go out there and run with it. You have some fantastic people that pick it up. You have in both systems, yeah. you have people that master it really well and not like we haven't yet figured it out, but I think what I was getting at with the, at what expense is, um, we're really missing in this field across the board, 
how to get people to move forward and implement, but implement with really great like fidelity. Yeah. Well, and um, that's where, you know, that what I was, that's where what I was going back to is you don't need to be a professional to participate in the act matrix in the small group that you operate in. But like, like if you really misunderstand don't. core parts of it, you're going to be disseminating incorrect information and like it becomes a problem. Here. And I don't, I don't mean run it as dissemination. Like you're not training a trainer. You're just applying it. You're just having a shared value conversation with people around you and saying, how can we work together to make this happen? I, I guess Maybe what I'm getting at is, be in the world. I think part of the, part of the crux, I think of the difference between what, um, of like go now forward mentality and like where I stand is like, we're missing a couple core understandings oh. of how to do this sort of stuff. I don't know if that's just me trying to articulate, I guess. Yeah, why. well, and that's where I, this is, and I'm talking about operating on a ton of different levels. And I am talking about that is just the base level of people who don't want to go learn about and teach and disseminate and set mm -hmm. up systems. What you can do is just create these cooperative relationships with other people in your life. You don't have Be to- Be a good human. Yeah, you don't have to have <laughs> professional training to go do that. And then- those people who are more inspired by some of the other shit I've been saying, or, you know, the conversations we're having or just uh, events in their life mm -hmm. can take on these bigger roles. And, and I'm telling you, pro social is starting to set up a system where people are getting into bigger things, but they need more people. They do. So if you are so inspired and if, you know, going back to that question, well, how do you choose to proceed? If you would like to proceed, come check it out. Get involved. I really hope Otherwise, to see, go be a good human. <laughs> I really hope to see their, uh, their training that they've been kind of working on for facilitators. Hopefully they can figure that out. I think that's one of the first big puzzle pieces to figure out to get something like this moving. The other side is the branding. Whenever you have social in there, the, the tendency of people pulling this into a socialism and other things like that is going to be yeah. it's going to be a problem at some point. But yeah, maybe not. marvelous, marvelous. We need, we need to end this. <laughs> We've been going for a while. We have been. No oh shit! It's already ten thirty. Yeah. Wow! All right. Yeah, we hit some good strides on this one, y'all. T with T Z. Ooh, I don't know. We might we might need something a little stronger next time. I think I need a stiff drink. <laughs> uh, I think my, my my tea needs to get spiked next time. Everybody, wait, bye to the live. I'm gonna end that. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.